Now, you may remember that on Monday's Budget Eve edition of this show, former Bank of Canada Governor David Dodge predicted the Minister Freeland would deliver the worst federal budget in decades. So what does he think now? Let's find out. David Dodge is with us live. Hi, Mr. Dodge. Good to have you back. Well, it was certainly a bad one, Bashy. Uh, and <laughs> okay, the, you're preempted my first irony, question. The irony is that the minister claims that this was one that's going to really help uh, the young people uh, uh, to grow and so on. In fact, what did she do? Uh, she she raised uh, she has asked the government of Canada to raise. Uh, about a hundred billion dollars of additional uh, taxes uh, to cover both the budgetary and other financial requirements, which all the young people are going to end in paying for. And secondly, then she, the very measure she used uh, to curb um, uh, to curb potential uh, growth that. Uh, that young investors, uh, young people setting up their new businesses, um, uh, the returns that they will be able to get uh, through the capital gain if their business makes money um, is reduced. So, in fact, while she's aimed to help the younger generation, what she has done, in fact, is not raise their potential future income, but have certainly increased their potential liabilities in terms of interest payments. Okay, let's unpack that because you, you included a lot in, in what you said there. And the first thing I want to ask you about is capital gains, because when you made the comment a few days ago that you thought this would be the worst budget in decades, you were, mm -hmm. you were responding to a question about speculation about the possibility of an excess profit tax or a new income bracket or a different sort of income tax on the wealthy. And there was concern among, for example, Corporate Canada about that eventually leading to uh, depressed investment on the corporate side. None of that came to fruition. The one new le uh, tax lever that they put in place was the capital gains decision, the, cha the changes I involved in that. They are very specific in, the, in who they say that will affect. You know, 0.1% of the 1% among individuals, that's what they say. I'm just putting that to you. And 12% of corporations because, you know, the, the, the new tax rate only kicks in after a, a certain point, basically, for individuals. If it is that targeted, um, why is it, the wrong thing to do in your view. We, well, precisely, the who gets hit by that? Who gets hit by that are the young people that are starting up their own business in hopes of uh, moving, uh, moving forward, making innovations. How do they do that? They do that by uh, hiring people who they pay with shares in the corporation um, that uh, they all hope will make money. Uh, and now what we've done, uh, come along with this tax measure, is to reduce uh, the value of that uh, ability to start up your business. So it, it, is, it is not massive, uh, Vashi, as you've just said, but it hits precisely the folks that are trying to do things to raise the income of Canadians by uh, investing and taking chances uh, in new innovation. I was watching a, a headline, I think a minister from the Ontario government was doing an interview on this very subject in a, at a US outlet. And the, and the banner, the sort of headline on the screen was, the feds hike capital gains in order to boost housing supply, to pay for more housing essentially is, is what the headline said. I think that's what the government would say the purpose of this is, and, and that's precisely what Minister Freeland said in that clip. There is pressure on them to do that from a political perspective, and, and we've seen lots of economists talk about the constraints on supply. I can see you ready to shake your head and tell me why that's a bad idea, but that is sort of the justification that they've put on the table. Well, first of all, first of all, what they claim is they're going to raise about $6 billion in this fiscal year. How, mm -hmm. how does that happen? That happens because they expect people will bring forward potential gains into this year that they might have deferred a, a number of years out. So it, all they're doing is shifting something around into this year in order 
to meet a figure, um, but it's a very, uh, it's a perverse tax move in terms of, of the incentives for growth. And, and growth is what we need if we're going to raise incomes of everybody in the future. So I think it's unfortunate. It's not massive uh, as, as uh, some people and I had feared, uh, but it is structurally a very unfortunate move uh, in the sense that it will slow at the margin, it's going to slow economic growth and basically hurt the very people that she claims that she wanted to support. I want to also ask you about the bigger picture where the level of spending is concerned, because you used to occupy the role, of course, that many Canadians now look to in their deep concern over the, the, the level that interest rates are at. As you look ahead to the next interest rate decision the Bank of Canada governor will have to make, he has signaled that the combination in the aggregate of spending between the federal government and the provincial yeah. governments, which we, you know, to be fair, we had Premier Ford talking there, he's running a bit, way bigger deficit than he said he would be as well. Mr. Macklin has raised the concern that that fiscal policy in combination could run counter to the monetary policy he's pursuing to, to lower inflation. Based on the numbers you've now seen from provincial budgets in this federal budget, do you think that will be the case? Uh, at the margin, uh, the governor is absolutely correct. It's, it's not helpful. Uh, it, it is not helpful because it does create, in the short run, some additional demand and demand uh, in areas and in markets uh, where supply is already tight. So at the margin, it is certainly not helpful on the inflation front. What do you anticipate as we look ahead to the next decision um, the bank will be considering? Like, which way do you think they'll be leaning? We also have some new inflation data out that showed gas prices push the headline number up a bit, but core inflation remains on a downward trend. Yeah, well, the bank focuses on core inflation, and we'll have to see uh, over the next two or three uh, or four months uh, how that evolves. Uh, the, I think our expectation uh, is still that it is basically on a downward track, but it is going to bounce around, uh, and so... Uh, we will just have to see. All I would say is that at the margin, the provincial and federal budgets have made uh, Mr. Macklem's job just a little tougher. And what is uh, the biggest risk in your estimation to the key lending rate coming down even just a bit starting in June? Oh, I, I, I don't think it's, it's useful to speculate on particular dates. Uh, I mean, what we're or, looking for... Uh, just in general, what's the biggest risk to it coming down in general, then? I'll, I'll reform the question. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I mean, I think, I think we're headed to lower rates, but not nearly as low rates as everybody hopes. <laughs> I use that word hope uh, advisedly. Um, it hopes for, because not only in Canada, but around the world, Supplies are, are relatively tight, uh, and, and there is generally continued upward pressure on, on prices. And so it, it's, it, it's likely that interest rates will come down, but certainly not down to the level that we observed before COVID. Mr. Dodge, I'll leave it there. Appreciate you joining us once again. Thank you so much. Sorry, I can't be more optimistic about that, but I think one has to be realistic <laughs> and plan realistically. Yeah, we're, we're looking for a dose of realism here for sure. Thank you, Mr. Dodge. It's, appreciate it. Bye-bye, Vashi. David, bye-bye. David Dodge is a former Bank of Canada governor.